This tutorial is about adding color saturation to your RGB chrominance and then adding more color saturation once you composite your luminance with your RGB data in your LRGB composite. Well, maybe five years or so ago, what we typically did was we went into our image, this is our RGB data, and we go into curves, and we'd increase the curves like this. We'd bring down the white point a little bit so as not to totally saturate the stars so that we can colorize them better. Next step would be to bring back the black point a little bit so you get maybe values of 14 to 20 in these dark regions. And then you'd go under Edit Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and you'd boost up the saturation maybe by anywhere from 25 to 45 units here, and that would get you your RGB with color saturation. There's an easier way to do that now, because don't forget in the previous tutorials, we have used DDP and CCD Stack to pretty well take care of the curves and levels adjustment that we used to do. So now we're coming in with an image that looks like this, and we can go to Image, adjustments and match color. In match color we can increase the luminance to a value of about 150 and increase the color intensity which is I think a little bit better more gentle way of increasing the color saturation than the hue saturation slider bar that we used before and bring up the color saturation that way. We can even then circle the galaxy go into the feather selection, feather it with a large value like 150, and do the match color adjustment for color saturation again. Maybe we bring up the luminance a little bit less by 131, but we bring up the color intensity uh, pretty strongly again with a value of anywhere from 130 to 150. And you can see the result. Very nice, strongly colored. That's a good starting basis to composite our LRGB image. But there's a little bit of a problem in terms of color balance. If we go back one slide, Take a look at the histograms for the red, the green, and the blue. You notice that the red comes out about here, the green comes out about there, but the blue seems to be absent out here where it's a little bit brighter. So what we want to do is we want to equalize the histograms here. On the left side they're pretty good, but we want to bring up the blue intensity a little bit to put some blue pixel in this region where there are already green and red pixels to provide more overall balance. Still have our galaxy circled here. We have it feathered. We simply go in to curves. We select blue. We bring this up to an amount that will bring that blue histogram over and match the others, the red and the green. When we're done with that, we can make a little bit of an adjustment in the green, push it up a little bit. You get three histograms that pretty well overlay one another and are pretty well matched. You see a little bit more blue magenta color in the spiral arms as one would expect and everything looks good and we're pretty well done with our color enhancement and our color balancing. This is what we started with. This is what we ended with. Look at the star color. Look at the galaxy color. That's something that we can work with when we blend in the luminance. So we take our RGB data here and we go to our luminance layer here and we select it by hitting Control A for copying the canvas and Control C for copying what's on the canvas. And then we paste the luminance over the RGB and we change the blending mode of the luminosity layer to luminosity and we change the opacity here by sliding this over to anywhere from 50 to 70 percent. Now we've got an image that looks pretty decent. We've got the detail from our deconvoluted high-pass filtered luminance that we covered in the previous tutorials and we've got the intensity and the saturation of color from the chrominance layer. So we're pretty much done at this point. There's one trick I'd like to offer to you to increase the color contrast of that image. Here's where we started from. I've zoomed in a little bit to show you what we're working with. We've got the luminance at about 61%, luminosity mode, RGB is beneath it. What we do is we then copy the RGB layer. We select it, we do a control C copy, and then we go to the luminance layer and paste it. So we're pasting an RGB layer called RGB copy over everything else. But then what we want to do is we want to change the blending mode of that copied RGB layer to soft light and turn the opacity way down to perhaps 22%. And what that does is it makes the background a little bit darker. It intensifies the color even more. It just makes for a more dramatic image. And with that, you can play between the intensity of this soft light RGB copy layer somewhere in the 20% range, and now you can begin to pump up the luminance layer a little bit more and get even more of that detail that's present in the luminance layer by moving it from, I think we had 61% here, 78, until you get what you like. So you have a nice black background, you have some good contrast, you have some weak spiral arms coming in, and you have intense colors in the galaxy and in the stars.
See the difference between the two? That's with the added layer in soft light mode, that's without. You're almost at the end of the process, but you'll notice that the edges of your frames, due to dithering and due to registration, have some bad data. So you'll simply crop that out. You'll move these handles down. You'll want to frame your object, but you want to cut these edges out. You're done, and you're ready to post. So what I do is I duplicate the image. I change the, the bit scale from 16 bits to 8 bits. I then change the size down from maybe 4,000 pixels in my case to about 2,500. And then generally I'm working in Adobe 1998 color space because when I save my 16-bit TIFF file, if I ever want to print it out large, that's what we like to use. But for portraying it on the screens and the monitors for your uploads from websites, it's better to use the sRGB destination space. So here's where you convert it over. You save it as a JPEG and then you can post it to your friends.